Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Hey, listen, we started this new series called Friends last week, and, um, and if you know us, we do everything with intention. This isn't a series to be cute. This is a series on friendships uh, to take serious, because how many know that the people that you have in your life currently or in your past have shaped the course of your journey, have shaped the course of your lifestyle, have shaped the course of your events, your experiences in this life. And some of them have been healthy and some of them have been unhealthy and some of them have been traumatic and some of them have been awesome. But regardless, we have all experienced life through people. That's the truth. And God has a lot to say about relationships in the Bible. And our goal today is to, is to get you to take a step back. Everybody say, take a step back. We have to come to the place where we can intentionally take a step back and look at the people that we currently have in our life and really begin to assess who's in my life, address the issues of these relationships in order for us to progress with the kind of life that God wants us to to, to have, but, but also the kind of life God wants you to become, and that's obviously become more like Christ. But that takes intentionality. And so um, periodically I do panels, and I have a, a group of wonderful people here that are going to help me with, with just talking about this, this topic. But um, we did this song for a reason. It wasn't just like, oh, wasn't that cute? No. There is, there is no better friend there is no loyal friend. There is no committed friend. There is no friend who is uh, ready and willing to give his life over and over and over again for you. And that friend is Jesus. And, and I want to start with this verse, Proverbs 18, verse 24. Look up on the screens, guys. It says, some friendships don't last for long. Isn't that the truth? But there is one. Everybody say, but there is one. You know, so don't complain about like, I got no, I got no good friends. I got No, but there is one. There is one loving friend who is joined to your heart closer than any other. The original King James Version, the original translation of this verse is simply says this, is that I stick closer than a brother. And when you begin to think about, you know, that verse and, and, and you take what God said that he is closer than, than a brother. I have five siblings. I, I love my brothers and I love my brother and my sisters. I trust them. I love them. I know they, they're, they're there for me at any moment. But God's saying, no, let me tell you something. I am still closer than your closest bloodline that you have on this earth. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And so um, I said this last week, I have learned in life that when God wants to bless me, he sends me people. And I've also learned that when Satan wants to curse me and destroy me, he sends people too. And, uh, and we have to understand that, that every single one of us are influenced. Everybody say influenced. We are all influenced by people. And don't be the person that says, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an influencer. Yeah, you're an influencer and you're influencing others just like others are influencing you. And so you can be influenced by evil. You can be influenced by Satan's tactics and not even realize that, man, the enemy is using me to be destructive in someone else's life. And so this is a disclaimer. When we talk about uninviting the wrong people out of our life, just accept the fact that maybe you're the wrong person in someone's life right now. Oh, I got quiet up in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> we just, yeah, we just went Catholic right now. <laughs> Listen, this, this, this isn't just about me. This is about me and they. What, what, what kind of friend am I? but what kind of friends do I have in my life as well? So I want you to know that today that that doesn't mean that God doesn't love wrong people. God loves all people. 
God loves the most worst individual on earth right now, the lowest person, the highest person. He doesn't play favorites. He loves everyone. Now, why are we talking on friends? Because it's important. Friendships are important. They, they are important in our life because we need people that will support us. We need people that will empower us. We need people that will encourage us. Um, we need people to laugh with. We need people to do life with. You know, we need people to cry with. You know, we need people in our life, friends in our life. Like, you know, these are three wonderful friends. We were just cracking up jokes and they're laughing. We should be studying and we're not. We're laughing and just cracking jokes on each other. You know, so there's a time to laugh. There's a time to weep. And there's a time to mourn together. We need, we need each other. And so uh, not, uh, not, not just realizing that we need friends, but also realizing that your closest friendships are, are shaping the course of my life right now. The people you're spending time with right now are shaping your life. How scary is that? You see, we don't think about that because most of us, if, and this is not just in this church, in every church, we live hap, ha, hazardously and we're just kind of just going with the flow. Oh, whatever, whoever comes in my life, praise God, I'll call my friend. No, that's not the way God does things. That, let, let me define what, what, what Jesus said about friendships. Are you guys ready? Here's, here's what he said and then we're gonna get into some questions. Jesus clarifies what kind of friend he is, but he also clarifies what kind of friend we should be and what kind of friends people should be to us as well. Look at this, John 15. Uh, how many here are believers? You believe in God? You believe in Jesus? Okay, good. I'm talking to the right people. All right, look at this. Verse 13 of John 15. Everybody say no one. No one has greater love than the one who gives their life for their friends. Number one, you got to ask yourself, man, do I have people that are willing to, to give their life for me? Do I have people that are willing to save me? You know, in, in my um, 42 young years of life, I have saved three people from death. That's the kind of friend you want, right? Like, man, if something goes down, you want someone that can just step in and just take care of it, handle it. But guess what? But I also want friends in my life that, man, if I'm going through something challenging, hard, I want someone to be able to come in and be like, man, I got you, Mauricio. Okay, that's what Jesus says, man. A real friend is someone who's willing to give, to lay down their life to you. Verse 14, you are my friends. This is Jesus in the red, okay? This is who's saying this, Jesus. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command. So how many know that God has a friend expectation? In other words, there are some things that God, that Jesus, he won't cross because God already has a standard. There are some things that Jesus won't compromise. So he says, hey, listen, I'm going to be your friend as long as you obey my command. And we're not talking about a human being. We're talking about God Almighty. Amen. So I think he's got a little higher standard than us. Amen. Aren't you glad that God has a higher standard than our lifestyle? I do not call you slaves anymore. And it's not because, oh, God, we used to be his slaves. No, God said, no, you used to be saying slave. And so you are no longer called slaves. I call you now. Come on, 10 o'clock, do better. <laughs> Ready? Okay, I call you. Friends. I call you friends. And he says, slaves do not know their master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. I have told you everything I learned from my father. So you know what he says? I have told you everything I learned. In other words, when you are a God friend, when you're a legit friend, that means that my job as your friend is to bring you closer to the father. If you say you're a Christian, a believer, and you're not bringing people closer to the father, what kind of friend are you? Honestly. Honestly. If you're not concerned about people spending eternity with you in heaven, what kind of friend are we? And so Jesus says, hey, whoever spent time with me, I shared with them the knowledge of the Father. In other words, I didn't hold back anything the Father showed me. I didn't hold back anything the Father told me. I share everything with you because the more I share with you, the closer you are to the Father. Okay, this is his definition, so don't hate Verse 16, you did not choose me. Instead, I chose you. I appointed you so that you might go and what? That will. And so here's another thing. Jesus says, hey, the kind of friend that we should be or the kind of friends that we should have should be the kind of friends that help us bear fruit. In other words, what fruit? Many of us would say, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, they, you know, bear fruit of like gifts. 
You know, they should, be, they should be buying me the best gifts. They should remember my birthday. They should send me birthday cards. That's bearing fruit. No, the, 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 the fruit that Jesus is talking about is the fruit of the Spirit. You see, you either have people that are bringing out of you peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, or you have people that are pouring into you anger, rage, anxiety. What are some other ones? Envy, jealousy, strive, hatred, lust, lust, evil, all those things. So you you have to realize that Jesus says, but when you spend time with me, I'm going to bring out the peace in you. I'm going to bring out the joy in you. I'm going to bring out the love in you. I'm going to bring out the kindness in you. But when you hang out with your friends, how do you feel when you leave their presence? Do you feel peace? Do you feel joy? Do you feel uh, a sense of kindness? Do you, do you feel a sense of, of, of liberty, free? What do you feel? And so Jesus right here is very, very, very clear. So I brought these amazing three people with me today. And let me just sit back here because I don't want to cover these beautiful faces I have up here. I brought them because, you know what, I have known each one of them probably four to six years. And I have seen them be consistent with their relationships. And, and there's others here, but, but these guys are legit when it comes to, um, they're not drama. Have you ever heard someone say, or have you ever said, dang, why do I always, you know what, get all the drama people? Anybody ever say that? Like, man, but, but here's the truth. No, nobody, nobody here uh, just has drama people enter your life. Everyone invites drama into their life. And, uh, and so, uh, George, I've, I've known for years, and he's one of our, our team leads in our youth ministry. And uh, let me tell you something. This guy loves hard. I mean, he, he not only loves adults amazingly, but he loves youth incredibly. For example, he will bring the most toughest, most difficult youth to our youth ministry sometimes that are crazy. And, and I love it because he's a friend. When we were at youth camp, we had this one kid who was just out of control. And he came and he was just not having it. And, and I just told him, like, listen, here's the deal. Just remember this because he was having an attitude. And I said, hey, listen, we love you. And God wins all the time. And he was just like, yeah, whatever. Well, guess what? That, that friendship and the love that ha- this kid ended up giving his life to Christ and just, boom, everything fell off. So just a good friend. He, he'll love you hard. And then Katrina. You guys know Katrina? This girl. Do I have to say any more? Uh, Katrina, Katrina is, is someone that always has joy. Man, you come around her, she'll encourage you, empower you. You know, it, she's She's solid. She's, she's, uh, she's there for you when you need her. Uh, she'll take your call at any time. I mean, just an incredible woman. And people that hang with her um, become better. And then you have here Benny. Who doesn't know Benny Gideon? Oh, my God. Listen. No, listen. True story. If you ever go anywhere in Santa Clara, just ask them, do you know Benny Gideon? <laughs> Everybody knows Benny. Everywhere I go... And I say, yeah, Benny Gideon goes to church. Oh, yeah, I know Benny. Anywhere. Anywhere. Is that not true or not? Everywhere I go. If I go out to lunch with him or something, it's we meet someone that knows Benny. And you know what's pretty cool? I love the fact that Benny relates to every single age. Like from old people to mid-range people to young people. Everybody knows Benny. And, uh, and he's a real great friend. And he's, oh yeah, sorry, Katrina's part of our volunteer director ministry. And then Benny's part of our youth ministry as well. And of course, if you were here last weekend, you saw one of our youth give Benny a shout out in a video. And uh, that's Benny. Benny the Frenny. <laughs> All right. So um, guys, let's talk. So friendships in the present influence the nature of your friendships in the future. Let me say that again. Friendships in the present influence, and and this is what we're talking a lot about today, influence the nature of your friendships in the future. In other words, there is this wicked cycle in us, this tendency for us to pick the same kind of friends. They look like you, talk like you. Hey, they're even your own color. Let me talk about that. Most people, look at your friends. Are they all one uh, race? Like, are they all Hispanic? Are they all black? Are they all white? Are they all Asian? Or is, this, or is there this beautiful 
amazing rainbow of colors of God's beautiful creation of all cultures, creeds in your, in your life, people that, that you feel comfortable with because there is, there is this, 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 this issue that we all have. We all have this, this cycle that even I had to break as I been, became a Christian. I had to ask God to just deliver me from, from being comfortable with my same you know, type of even education, profession. I mean, sometimes it's even hard for professionals that are up here to hang out with people that may not be at your professional level. Do you know that that's stereotyping? people and there, listen and there's a little bit of stereotype in every single one of us and we have to guard from that because God wants us to connect with all people but there is this vicious cycle look at Proverbs twelve twenty six says this godly people are careful about the friends they choose but the way of sinners leads them down the wrong path so we're talking about um, um, you know f- the influence of friends but I want everyone to know including you guys that the moment you invite someone into your life, they now have uh, friendship rights. What does that mean? That means that if I'm your close friend, then I now have the right to counsel you, advise you, direct you. And sometimes we have the most not so healthy, not so wise counsel uh, people in our life, and, and we just go ahead and listen to them because they're friends. You know, I, I gotta listen to my friend. But, but how many know that that's not the way God rolls, right? It got, God rolls with wisdom. And so um, here's the question. So how do you choose your relationships wisely and how do you determine the friendship that's either good or bad for your future? Well, how do you guys do Who wants to go first? All right. I guess I'll go first. Um, Thank you. In the beginning, before I gave my life to Christ, I only surrounded myself with successful, money-driven individuals. Um, I've had a very closed-minded, I mean, just very closed-minded. And when I came to Christ, um, I had to be obedient and really get out of my my comfort bubble. Um, I had to talk to different races, different um, people in different professions, different ages. I mean, I went from older to younger. Um, and because I was obedient and because God was directing me into the, to be in the right um, friendship, I ended up finding somebody here that I actually could relate. I could be um, completely crazy because I do get crazy sometimes. I can be the loud me. I could be the goofy me. Um, I could just be real and not once Um, did that person ever judge me? So if you find that, if you find somebody that you can be who you are and not the fake person, that you can be real, that they will always um, direct you right back to the word, always encourage you. I mean, those are the ones that you pick the wise choices. And I can honestly call her one of my best friends. Um, So that's how I... I, I already have my key points of what, what I pick. For. Yeah, they have That's to encourage good. me, be with me, direct me, right, and be able to be bold enough to correct me in love because I could be a little loud and vocal and they need, someone needs to calm me down. That's awesome. That's good that you're keeping it real. That, that's good. How about, how about you? I think for me, um, what's important is looking at the person's life and seeing if there's fruit in their life. Um, I want somebody that my brother had said earlier, is better than me and that is going to inspire me to do better um, and draw me closer to God. So that's, that's my key. Um, you know, and then I also have to identify the type of relationship that we have. There's some times where people are in my life so that I can pour into them, but then there's other times where I need somebody to pour into me. So it's very important to, to acknowledge what type of relationship you have. Like you mentioned, that young man, that's a relationship that I'm called to pour into. I'm, I'm not expecting to receive anything on his behalf because he needs a father figure. That's good. A, a spiritual inspiration, and that's what I'm there for. I li- I li- but I like that because, you know, sometimes God will give you an assignment, and, and um, an assignment can be a person, and it's not necessarily for you to expect something back. Sometimes God doesn't want you to expect anything back. He just wants you to bring them up. And, uh, and to bring them closer to God. Uh, they may not be your friend, but you can, you can be like, like Jesus. Uh, you didn't choose me, I chose you. 
And so choose, choose wisely who you're going to invest your, your, your God life into, but also choose wisely who's going to speak into your life because influence is big. How about you, Benny? So everything Katrina and George said, I agree with, and I completely say go do, do that advice because it's real. Um, I would also say when you're, when you're picking your friends to choose the right or the wrong friends, um, make sure that you maybe run them by a friend that you've had who's had your back for years. Like, you know this person's not going to do you wrong. You know this person has loved you, and they've been with you. And when you're inviting someone new, maybe hang out together and have that friend who's had your back be like, so what did you think? Not gossip, but just talk about it. Just be like, what do you think about this person? And really determine how you can serve them. Because if you're a reflection of your friends, they're also a reflection of you. So the way you set your friends up to minister to you is important as well. Yeah. Um, you can't set people up for failure and then expect them to be a successful friend. And I also think that friendships like marriage, um, you're there for better or for worse. You're there in richer or poor. You're there in sickness and in health. Um, if you have a friend that leaves you when you're broke, they're not your friend. If you have a friend who leaves you when you're sick, they're not your friend. If you have a friend who leaves you in your worst times, then they're not worthy to love you at your best. Yeah. So, yeah. Very good, very good. And, and even love you when you're ugly. Yeah. You know, because we can all get ugly sometimes. We can all be funky and just weird and... And, uh, and that's a very, very good. You know what? There's a statement that I think many of us have probably heard. Uh, show, show me your friends and I will show you your future, right? But I stepped that up last year. Put, the, put my second point. Show me your friends and I can show you your past, present, and future. And you have to understand that. Because the friendships that I've had in my past have shaped a part of me today. Whether it was healthy or unhealthy. And, um, and we have to think about that even most of our emotional problems that we have today, they always tie back to a friend. They always tie back to a family member. They always tie back to a person. And that's, that's the truth. Not just on a negative uh, sense, but also there's some positive emotional things, healthy things that are in my life because of people that were in my life. But, but just think, the person I am today is is not just something that I created on my own. It was created with a group of people that I have invited for the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And so the reason we do this message is, is because, you know, it's some of us, we have been shaped to be so fearful, so inferiority, so uh, 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 you lack uh, self-worth. And the only reason we get to those places is because you've had people that have made you feel that inferiority not good enough not 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 able to 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 see the highest potential in you and we have a responsibility to take responsibility for that and say man i gotta i gotta look at my friendships and i really gotta take a step back and start addressing this okay so um number two Friends influence each other's personal preferences and lifestyles. So, you know, I know the preferences is like the whole thing. Uh, like, for example, Pastor Anthony, who, you know, Mr. Luther Vandross, number two. Uh, you know, I had a pastor friend of mine who was here two weeks ago for our, our, our family conference, marriage conference. And uh, he said to me, he's like, he's like hey, uh, is, is, is that, is, are you related to him? You know, I'm like, well, first he's black. <laughs> I'm Hispanic, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and he says, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, no, no. Uh, uh, I'm like, no, he's, he's, uh, he's our uh, uh, assistant pastor here. And he said, he said, wow, he's like, man, hearing him talk is like talking to you. Hearing him, you know, even his, his mannerisms and everything. And so, you know, many times, many of us, we have like, like, have you ever heard this whole thing? Like, oh, my God, you guys look like twins. I thought you were sisters. But you're not. You're just best friends, right? Or like, oh, my God, you guys finish each other's sentences. Yay. You know, like, oh, my God, you got the same style. Wow. And so, and so that's preferences. But I'm talking about the influence of lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because they also influence in our lifestyle. Many of us are influenced. And, and when you say lifestyle, I'm talking about how you live your life. Uh, they're either, you're either... You're either getting stronger, more committed, and more faithful to your relationship with God, or you're not. I promise you, many of you that struggle, not just in this church, but in every church, that struggle with their relationship with God, it always ties back with the people they're hanging with. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen people in our church that are like, just like, yes, and worship, just loving God, yes. And you would see them, and, and then all of a sudden, they got these friends, and they went from this to like, and so I already know, I'm like, oh, 
either she got a boyfriend, he got a girl, or they're hanging out with the wrong crew because I don't even know who you are anymore. That's what happens. It's like water being poured on fire. It gets put out. And so the um, question is this. How do you manage the influence of your friends in your lifestyle? How do you manage that? Go ahead. Go. I think for me, um, when I first came to Elevate, I was more, we talked about it in 304. I'm a poet. I can inspire people with my words. But I knew an area that I was lacking in was plumbing, which is doing. Yeah. So I look for a friend that is a doer. Um, I don't know if you guys know, Gus, he's, he's a doer. So I made sure to connect myself with him. And he's the one that kind of inspires me. So I, an area that I lack in, I look for somebody that's strong in that area so that they can begin to inspire me and motivate me. To yeah. And there's a picture, I think, of Gus and, yes. and, and you, yeah. man. Look at that. Look at that. That's love right there, man. That's a bromance right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Under the definition of bromance, there's that picture. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you smile. did you get permission from from Gus to show that? <laughs> How about you, <laughs> Katrina? For, for me, it had to come to my identity. I had to learn who I was. That's good identity. Yeah, identity. Um, because looking back, I didn't know who I was, so I would gravitate to whoever. You know, if they were having fun, that's where I was. That's what I would do, and they, but they were no good. You know, they would get me into trouble. Um, so when I when I really, really had to um, come to where I, I became committed is I had to learn who my identity was in Christ, and I would only allow people to influence me who were on fire for Christ. I would always ask myself, um, are they bettering me? Are they challenging me? And if not, then I wouldn't allow that influence to stay in my life. Now, now what about this? Have you ever had... Any people that, that may be friends, because you, I, I know that in the first service, you were saying that you were a party animal. Yes. I mean, so talk about that. So you were, you were a clubber. You I were was. in the club just going, doom, doom, yeah. doom, doom, I was doom. the dancer. Da, 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 yeah, exactly. Right? I was the dancer. I was the drinker. And yeah, I allowed myself to just be influenced and surround myself with those type of people. And I mean, now I'm a dancer for Jesus. I have to calm myself down sometimes. And but what do your friends I, say now? What, 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 how? My friends, well, I lost a lot of them because they um, would say, oh, that's a phase. You know, no way. Like, you're a drinker. There's no, you're a partier. You're only in, in a phase, and we'll see you back in a couple of months. And I really had to stand firm again with my identity and tell them, no, this is who I am. I am committed. I am excited. And, yeah, I might not be that drunk partier Katrina, but you know what? I'm still that fun Katrina. Just now, I party and excited about Jesus and about how he restored my life. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's, that's good. And, and let me tell you something. That's tough when you have to make that tough decision of, of releasing some people out of your life. And we're going to ask. That's one of my questions. Let's just go there. How do you oh, no, let you go, go next, and then I'm going to talk about this other question. Uh, for me, it's, it's very simple. Um, if they're walking in the will of God, you're allowed to influence me. If you're not, then you're not. Um, I don't let people come and speak into my life that lack the fruit of what their mouth says. So if someone tells me I'm a Christian, but there's no fruit, it doesn't matter. Talk is cheap. Um, I want to see your walk. What's your walk like? Um, that's not to say that other people who don't love Jesus, can't influence you. But if they're going to influence me, they have to influence me into the word of God. They have to influence me into the work of God, into the will of God. So, for example, if somebody is successful with their finances and I want to learn to be successful financially, well, my motive is to be successful financially for the kingdom. Yeah. So I might need to get around that person for a little bit and let them teach me what they know in that area. But when it comes to every other area, if there's no fruit there, then I can't receive from them. Yeah. So I, I was given the example at the eight when I first came here. Uh, oh my gosh, the way I used to dress was horrible, uh, real bad. Like I wouldn't hang out with me, but my pants, my pants could fit like a whole family in them. I had like the spinner watches, you know, the fake chains, almost turning green on my neck. And then I saw a pastor, and I'm like, oh man, I got dressed differently. Like okay, cool. So then I let him influence my style, and other people in the house influence my style because. I was like, that's what a man of God looks like. And as long as it's in God's will, then I'm down. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, let me, let me give you three because you know what? We are all vulnerable 
to, at some point in our life, invite the wrong they, all of us. Let's just take three men of the Bible. You have Samson was a strong man. You had David was a spiritual man. And then you had Samson who was smart. And every, Solomon, sorry, Solomon who was smart. And every single one of them fell through a relationship. All of them. And so it doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are. Every single one of us, if we don't choose our friends wisely, we all have that vulnerability or that opportunity for us to, to fall through one bad relationship can jack us up for a long time. Yes or no? Yes. Amen. Let, let, me, let me take you to this because this, this is good. In Galatians 5, 7, I want, I want you to see this. It says, you were running a good race. Have you ever been just so good with God? Like, man, I'm on fire for God. I love God. I'm going to church. Wow, every time they open the doors. Do you know that in America now only... Uh, um, uh, 50% of Christians attend church twice a month. Like that's, it's, it's sad, but, but it makes total sense. There's so much distraction that we come to the place that we were running good at our race at one point. But look, but he says, who has kept you from obeying the truth? Now, what does that mean? Let me give you these two points because notice that this didn't say what has kept you. It said, who has kept you from the truth? Who has kept you from the truth? Because whoever is keeping you from the truth is keeping you from running the race. And there are two types of people that you have to have uh, or that you may have in your life, but there's one that's most important. The first one is faith people. You need faith people in your life. Faith people will build you up in Christ and push you forward, but flesh people will waste your time, give you temporary happiness, and drain your energy. And that is the truth. And so, and listen, Everyone here has one or the other. And, and if you have a drainer, all right, man, help them change. Bring them up. Do something with them and, and be, a, be a difference maker in their life. Question number three, how do you end friendships that are not healthy for you? Like, man, how do you end them? Because some of us, we need to unfriend some people, not on social media, but literally unfriend some people. And, but there's a way to do that. And, and uh, I know it's a tough question. And I don't, I, I, I mean, I know that you all personally have probably have experience, but how do you, how do you, how do you end one? Um, growing up, I had one male figure in my life who um, was a great influence into the world of addiction. Um, but once I came to God, he couldn't have that influence over my life anymore. So I kind of had to love him from a distance. Now, completely sever him off, I didn't, because I want that bridge to continue to be there that, when he comes to the realization that he needs God in his life, who's he going to call? That's very good. The Ghostbusters know he's going to call me. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to call me and he's going to be like, hey, George, I need Who you to Who are you going to call? So it's not about necessarily cutting him out, but it's just being about, uh, more, more so about being wise, who you allow to influence. And, A, you had an influence at one point, but it was just for a season. That's it was good. temporary. That's good. Now, let me be the influence in your life. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. How about you, Katrina? Yeah, for me, I had a really close friend um, and when I did give my life to Christ, um, she wasn't happy for me, but I didn't see it, right? I didn't see the negativity. And then we hung out, and again, you know, I, I gave up drinking. And we, when we did hang out, she was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's a, just a season. And she would constantly, every time I would tell her something exciting, she would always come back with negativity, and I finally realized it. Um, that she wasn't getting it, and I really had to stand firm and say, no, I'm, I, I am truly committed. And um, she kind of was like, okay, well, you're going to be boring. You're not going to have fun. I'm like, geez, I'm not dead. I'm not a zombie. Like, I could still have fun here, guys. Um, so eventually, you know, God is going to remove those people that are toxic. And I was trying to hold on to those friendships because those were my friends. So I tried everything, and God really had to speak to me and say, I will bring you new ones. Because I didn't think, that, like, okay, how can I be friends with the Christians? You know, what if they're just the holy rollers? That's what we all heard, right? Or what if I cannot relate to them because look at where I came from. Look, you know, we all have a story. We all have a past. So I never thought that I could actually connect with Christians and and get close so I always had that in the back of my head but no God removed them and our friendship did part ways but I always kept that door open like George said I still to this day will text her on holidays and her birthday hmm. because ultimately I still have to show Christ love 
Yeah. So I always have to keep that and reflect love. Yeah, and, and you know, and that takes courage to, to see, until you're ready to take God serious, God will take you serious. At, at some point, you got to come to that conclusion that, you know what? I mean, because think about it. All right, well, I don't want to give up my, I love them. They're, I've, I've known them since I was a little kid. But here's my question. But when you look in the mirror and you see yourself and you see that you've been a friend with them for that long, and they haven't changed, and they've been under your influence? How is that possible? What kind of friend are you? And that's where, that's where, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you have to be honest, brutally honest with yourself. It's beautiful because you can get delivered, and it's brutal because you have to come to your, your truth. And, and right now, there may be some people that you're hanging out with, and they're not leading you closer to God. But here's, here's this. But you're not leading them closer to God either. So, so this relationship is going where? Or, do you guys remember point number two last week? Or everywhere. You want people to take you. And some of you right now in this room, you're everywhere. You're everywhere. One moment I'm with God, the next moment I'm with my friend. It's like it's a battle between choosing God and these relationships that are being toxic and not helping you. And so there is, how about, how do you do, Benny, when it comes to ending a friendship? So before anything, um, I just want to say this in love, guys. A lot of us don't surrender the area of friendship. We just kind of go into it. Uh, we don't ask God about it. We just kind of, it's like fast food. We're just like, okay, I'm going to choose this person. Cool. That's, that's my preference. You can't do that. Uh, after you walk with God for a while, there has to be this, this urgency to mature where you start praying for your friendships and your that's relationships. Good. You have to start praying God. And you got to give God permission because God's not a bully. God's not about rooting people out of your life and yeah. all that. God wants to put the right people in your life. Because if you don't become the right person, then you can't help people either. So one thing I do is I pray. And as cliche as that sounds, I ask God. I say, Lord, remove the people from my life that need to go. Yeah. And put me around the people I need to be around. Mm -hmm. and, and often the people you're going to be around are going to challenge you. <laughs> They're going to call you to a higher standard. They're not going to put up with your BS. <laughs> They're, gonna, yeah. They're really going to dig deep. And God will use them to cut on you instead of cut you off. Yeah. Um, a bad friend will go ahead and, and they'll cut you off before you even have a chance to have a relationship. So watch out for poison. Um, that's how I determine whether I need to cut somebody off. You never put moldy fruit with good fruit because then the good fruit will spoil. So check your fruit. Examine yourself. The Bible says examine yourself. If you see that the, the fruit inside of you is starting to rot, then you need to cut that person off. Because where you thought you were helping or pulling them up or being their lifeguard or whatever, you're drowning now. Yeah, And so when you find yourself in these situations or sinking sand, whatever you want to call it, that's where you know, okay, God, I need to go because what I thought I was here to do, I can't accomplish. Yeah, And I'm not helping them either, like Pastor said. So you have to recognize where your fruit's at and where their fruit's at. And if their fruit's moldy and it's not getting better, then it's time to go. And, and you know, I love what you said, Benny, because I think most often in this culture, we're so quick to just have fast food friendship because there's a desperation, but it's a hun hunger to belong with people, but not a hunger to belong with God. And, um, and, and when you said examine yourself, you know, the scripture says, uh, it's in Ephesians, it says examine yourself whether or not you are still in the faith. Like, we can, that means that we all have an opportunity to walk away from faith. Faith in what? Faith in knowing my identity. Faith in what? Faith in knowing my purpose, my mission. You know what? I ask myself all the time, and, and, and you know what, please don't take it this wrong, but I'm that kind of person that I, I don't have many friends, um, and I think as I'm getting older, I mean, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people, but I don't have many friends because as I have been maturing throughout the years, I realize that I want to focus more on the quality of my friendships rather, rather than the quantity of my friendships. Quality matters because as I focus on quality, then I am intentionally I'm growing with people that are going with the same mission the same direction I'm going in and 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 I, listen you're all getting older and we can't waste time we got to get people in our life that God has assigned Jesus prayed all night before he picked the 12 it wasn't just like okay I'll take you 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 no he prayed and he asked the father father who are the ones that are to help me carry your mission and he showed him Peter, James, John, Matthew, 
Luke. He just started showing him Andrew, all these men. He says, these are the ones. When was the last time we prayed for a friend? Honestly, I'd probably say maybe 80% of us don't do that. It could be higher. We don't pray for a God friend. We're desperate, so we just take any friend. Last question, social media. It's a blessing and a cursing. Social media has helped our world be better at communication and staying connected with family and friends. It doesn't matter where you live in this world. I think social media is a tool. It was a tool. But, but, we've, but we've changed it from a tool to a lifestyle. And, and th this affects every single person in this room. We have to be careful with social media. Why? Because, you know, social media is an emotional button for all of us. Let me explain. When you're constantly on social media, I have noticed that most people now are inferiority to what they're seeing because it makes them feel certain ways. Like, let's just say you're friends, right? You have friends and you're just like, you know, you love your friends. And then you're like, oh my God, look, they went to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. You know, okay. And oh my God, how come their marriage is so awesome? They're always taking pictures together. Oh, oh my God, now they're in Hawaii. And you just start going and you start feeling all these, these, it's almost like you get bitter and resentful and as if, as if Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is to validate your life. I mean, we have literally vicariously been living a life through someone else's lifestyle and realizing that, listen, all it's doing is damaging you. And so I'm very careful with social media. I don't follow many preachers. You know why? Because I guard myself from feeling inferiority. Because sometimes, you know what, you look at something like, dang, how come, I can't, how come I can't wave my hand like them? How come I can't <laughs> tell a story like that? Well, you know, like, dang, you brought it. How come I'm not bringing it? You know, and you start questioning yourself. You start questioning your marriage. You start questioning your children. You start questioning your, your life. And you're like, dang, how come I don't have a good life? But how many know that those are just highlights? Nobody lives like that 24-7. I mean, when was the last time that you posted you and your spouse arguing and fighting? <laughs> how about post that one tomorrow? I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Or why don't you post, man, instead of posting that big old juicy steak that took, took you three months to save up because Ruth's Chris is like two, three, four hundred dollars a plate, you know what I'm saying? And, and show your couple noodles. You know, everybody takes their pictures of their highlights. Wow, look at that, my salad, my, and it just gets weird. But how do you manage face-to-face -face time with people instead of, this you know because this is a powerful tool but but it's also a powerful weapon against us how do you manage it god had to um check me just recently in regards to this i think we become so numb to living a lifestyle through social media but there's no real connection in that um one of my buddies was posting on, on facebook hey this is my new number you know if you want to reach me go ahead and get a hold of me so he said this to all his facebook yeah, friends was at that moment God had impressed on me, you know, get a hold of him. He's seeking something. He's he's lonely. And I was so numb to it that I didn't obey what the Holy Spirit was, was impressing me to do. And days later he ended up passing away. So my friend called me and told me and the minute I hung up with him, I just started crying. And I said, Lord forgive me. Because I know it was you that was telling me to reach out to him. But now, God, that I've asked for forgiveness, show me how to reach these people. Show me how to reach the ones that the bridge is still there. But you called me to be an influence in their lives. That's good. And, and listen, and I know this is, this is, we talked about this last night, he and I, and no one has to carry that weight. However, sometimes I think that we do life with people by just liking their pictures. And, and you know what, most of us, we just start liking everything of our friends because we want them to make sure that they know that we like you. And validation once again, lack of identity again, right? But you know what it also does? It has numbed us from actually making a phone call when someone, like that, that, that would have been a great phone call, but also what about a phone call when someone is celebrating a graduation? Instead of just hitting a like, how about calling them and just saying, hey, you know what, I saw that you graduated. Man, I'm proud of you. That's awesome. Like there's this lack of connection between human beings. It's all social media now. We're just communicating through likes and likes and likes. And, and not knowing this, but do you know that we're training ourselves to 
have people validate us by how many likes we get on our own posts. And, and like, you look at someone, they're like, you know, 100 likes. And you look at yours, I got three. <laughs> and then you start thinking, people don't love me. We validate. How about you? How does that? Because Katrina, you're always on social yeah. media. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I love social media. I am the first person that will go through and be like, oh, look at them, look at them. But there has came a point where I get a little funky. I'm not going to lie. I'll be scrolling up social media and I'm like, oh my gosh, like look at her. Like she went to the place that I want to go or look at he gave her the ring that I want Vince to get me. <laughs> you know? So I get a little funky. Does anyone get funky like that sometimes? Be honest in here, church. No one's going to lift their hand. Of <laughs> okay, course you are. You're Christians. Alone. Thank you for Christians the five don't lift that their hand. Their hand. Yeah, no. yeah. God bless all. Uh, give me free yeah, coffee for exactly. all of you that said yes. <laughs> so when I do get funky and I start feeling jealousy rise in, I will pick up the phone and I will call that person. Wow. And I will bring up everything that, that they posted. Like, oh my gosh, so you went, you know, to Hawaii. That's awesome. And <laughs> oh, he proposed to you. That was a really big, beautiful ring. <laughs> you know, deep down inside. I'm like, oh. And the minute I hear the excitement out of their voice, it goes away. Because mm. then now I'm excited. That's awesome. And see, and when you... When you allow the enemy to creep in and to give you that, that jealousy, I mean, you, they'll separate you and from relationships that maybe you need in your life. Yeah. And so when I call, I rebuke it because now I'm walking in faith and it goes away because now I'm excited. And so no resentment, no jealousy has room in my life by picking up that phone call. That's awesome. And you're checking yourself basically yeah. at the door. No wonder you're always calling me. I'm like, yes, that's exactly why I call you <laughs> daily. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. No, but how about you, Benny? How do you manage that? Because I know that, you know, you've done a lot of rap music and a lot of, you know, that, and, and that's a big thing in social media. But how do, you, how do you handle, how do you manage that with your personal life? You know, it's, uh, it's two words, intention and stewardship. Um, with social media, I have to ask myself before I even get on it, why am I even on it today? Um, literally, it's like a daily question that's in the back of my mind. What am I doing on social media today? Am I here to check out other people's profiles? Am I here to glorify God? Am I here to tell people about a project that I want them to be a part of? What am I using it for? So it's very wise to ask yourself because the Bible says a righteous man gives careful thought to his ways. So what's your way? What's your purpose for being on social media? That's the first thing you got to ask. Also, with, with, with that said, because this is good, sometimes we can just post just because we want everybody to see. And that's pride a little. That's a little bit of pride. It's, 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 it's that, that, uh, that humble brag, right? Like I'm being humble, but, you know, like, oh, look, the Lord blessed me with this car. But you just want to just show it off. So watching, checking your heart, the motive. Yeah. So you, you definitely have to check your motives. Um, even like Pastor said, sometimes you make it about you. It's all about you. Like, but make it about others. Um, and then the second thing is stewardship. If you know that you can't handle social media, that it started to manage you, then that's an issue. You got to take your mind back. You got to take the ground back. So one thing I, I recommend is that people think fasting is just food, but you can fast social media too. Yeah, that's Put that good. thing on the side. Get with Jesus and ask him how to think about things. Um, I, I was watching this video that talks about how we don't think about what we think about. And if we would just take the time to think about what we think about, it'll make a big difference to how we approach things. Like Katrina was saying, she had to think about, okay, how do I combat what's managing me how do I manage that now and that's why she has victory in that area now yeah and and I like that um I was watching a a recently a uh, a video of a uh neuroscience doctor and she did she said um if if people if Christians would just spend 16 minutes a day without nothing in front of them and just find a, a quiet place, find a, a nice place, whatever, whatever fits your need. And when you sit there, you're literally, you're recreating new brain cells. But when you're on social media, you are burning brain cells. And, 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 and it begins to bring back worth and value of what really matters. Because now, you know, prayer is simply meditation. God says, meditate on these things. Meditate on what is true just lovely and a good report and he says and I'll guard your mind and your heart I mean Time Magazine even did a whole article on, on selfies look at this Time the me 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 generation 
Let me, let me tell you, do you know why they call it the selfie generation? Because it's hard to spell narcissist. You know what I'm saying? It's so, it's so just like, oh, that's too hard. Selfie, you know, and, and they just keep it like that. But, but here's, here's the truth as we end now. Let me give you this, these, these friend Ventori uh, uh, questionnaire that you have to ask yourself as we leave, okay? Uh, number one, do the friends I have inspire me to love God more or are they drawing me further away from God? Because in Proverbs 27, 17, it says, as iron sharpers iron, that's how some relationships feel right now, right? So people can improve each other, okay? So do they inspire me to love God more? The people you're hanging with right now, do they inspire you to love God? Or do they inspire you to walk away from God? Number two, do they celebrate me or tolerate me? Man, you need to be around people that celebrate you, not tolerate you. Like, oh, my God, here they come again. Yeah, I just, uh. Or maybe you're the person that's tolerating people. That's not right either. Number three, are they for me? You need people that are for you even when you're at your worst. They need to be for you. Do you know David, he looked at, he had all these buff, big, I mean, Carlos a big dude, man. So it was like 30, 40, 300 LaCarloses, and they're all just warriors. And, and man, they can, they can use a weapon like nobody's business. And you know, David stood in front of me, and you know what? He, he was like, I don't care about your muscles. I don't care about your gift. I can care less about your talent. I just want to know one thing. Read your Bible. He says this. I want to know one thing. Are you with me? And you got to have people that are with you. There's people that are in your life for a season, people in your life for a reason, but I need people in my life, in my core, for a lifetime. And that's what David was telling his men. If you're going to be with me, you better be with me, and not against me. Number four, do they speak truth into my life because they love me? The Bible says this, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, he rebukes. You need people that are going to come to you and be like, stop it. I love you and everything, but stop it. You're always talking about people. That's not you. That's not who you are. You're a loving person. You love, you need people that correct you with love, not judge you either. You know, correction doesn't mean you're going to judge them. Correction means you're going to love them to death. Literally, let them die to that place. And, 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 and why? Because I love it. It's not that I'm trying to expose you. It's because I want to help you. Amen? Bow your head, close your eyes. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.